Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. And I do hope everybody is having a great day. The weekend is finally here. Um, if you guys are happy about that, definitely hit that like button. Let me know how you guys are uh, doing today down in the comments below. Uh, but nonetheless, I do have a lot of things to talk about. From, you know, the age of utility to the adoption over in the UK to even kind of talking a little bit about some problems within the space. So first off, I do want to start off with my tw my tweet from uh, yesterday. You guys don't follow me over on Twitter or X, if you will. Maybe X does sound better, right? I don't know. Go follow me over on Twitter at NCash Official. I do post a lot of these uh, threads now. I'm going to be starting to do a lot more of this. But I said the age of utility is nearly upon us. We have found that the G20 instructed the FSB with the help of the BIS and the IMF to create a global crypto regulatory framework, which by the way, if you didn't know, back in December, while in the middle of the lawsuit, Ripple was able to comment on that framework. Mm, it's kind of weird, right? Nonetheless, back in June and July, I talked about this heavily. September is when the last and final framework is due. This will be a crucial document to read over and analyze. Uh, we also know that they confirm that crypto will be fully regulated globally by the end of 2025, their timeline, not mine. Utility will take over from the time that we get regulations and onward. The days of the Bitcoin driven market will soon be put behind us. And then the Bitcoin maxis can cry uh, in their XRP napkins, right? Because that's what they have been talking about forever is XRP this, XRP that. It's like, dude, talk about Bitcoin. That you were a Bitcoin maxi, not an XRP maxi. Uh, but that just jokes. Anyways. It's impossible to think that some of the projects won't experience exponential growth over the next five to 10 years. We have game changing technology in this space that is set to be utilized in scale. And I did mention a few of them, obviously XRP being one of them. And I said, there's many great opportunities in this market. One thing is certain, the future is digital and it's happening now. We are leading up to a big bang scenario where we can finally usher into the utility age of blockchain and of course DLT. So yeah. I do think that we're getting closer and closer. But one thing that I do want to mention is the time frame. I know everyone wants to know a time frame. And I said within the next two years, we will see big changes happening around crypto. I do think that it all starts with regulations, right? This is like the last major obstacle. I think everything else has kind of been put in place. Uh, we have faster payment systems launching. Um, ISO 2022, a standard that is really kind of open the, opening the door for uh, digital assets to really kind of take place is a big one. And what's funny about this is like, everyone wants to talk about how things are taking so long around crypto. ISO 2022 has been around since 2004. We still have a 2025 timeline over here for it to go fully live. So if you think about that, like, you know, this has been a long time coming. This is a huge historical moment in time for payments. Now, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about something. So Martin from Uphold uh, posted this article and it started to get a lot of hate, right? Like a lot of people were kind of hating on him around this and uh, they were calling it, calling it all old news. Now, there's a few things that are great within this um, and I'm going to mention that, but this is older news. And what do you see? The Bank of England is exploring working with cryptocurrency provider Ripple on developing um, an interledger protocol for payment settlement and the UK government is looking into using open banking for public services payments. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve is extending its oversight to cover novel technology driven risk, i.e. fintech and crypto, which I probably will be making a video on uh, by itself because there's a lot of information to really kind of unpack there. But yes, this is older uh, news. It got posted on August 4th of this year. Um, but the problem is the document, right? So this got posted by Edward Farina, uh, who is apparently an XRP maxi, um, but he also has a Bitcoin logo as his avatar. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Don't know too much about this individual, if I'm being honest. This got posted on August 1st, and it got played off as being new news. We do see, boom, the Bank of England, a UK central bank, has released a paper named Ripple Exploring the Synchronized Settlement of Payments Using the Interledger Protocol. We successfully integrated the Ripple solution with two simulated RTGS systems. Now, like I said, this is not new news. This got almost 400,000 views. It's kind of ridiculous if you think about it, because this is more so just engagement farming. Um, if you go over to my profile, 
on Twitter and you go through my media, it's actually probably one of the highlights uh, because under here is where I put most of the very interesting topics that I do cover. Um, I'm not too sure. I know it was a little bit uh, ago where I was talking about this, but we know that Ripple has been working in the UK for a very long time. I even said over here, like, remember the saying, it all starts in London. Ripple has made a major name for themselves in the UK. And I even covered the document, I think in this video here, um, but I do know that I uploaded it over on Twitter and it was a while back uh, where I was really kind of talking about it. But nonetheless, like this document is not new news. Um, it's more so for engagement farming. But within this article, we did get a few insights on some new news, which was uh, down here. So we do see additionally, Ripple has always been at the forefront of offering blockchain based solutions to the banking and financial sectors. Earlier this year, in May of 2023, Ripple unveiled its CBDC platform, which will provide central banks across the world to launch their own CBDCs in a quick, efficient and low cost manner. Now, the CBDC platform is something significant to mention and also focus on, and I'm going to address why in this video. So we do see the Ripple CBDC platform is a modified version of the XRP ledger. And no, there is not a private XRP. There's not a public XRP. Well, eh, I guess there is a public XRP, right? There's not a private XRP price, right? Like a lot of people were talking about this private XRP token that has a different price and blah. It's all clickbait. There's only one XRP. David Schwartz even talked about this. It's ridiculous. Um, but nonetheless, as per Ripple, this platform will use the same blockchain technology as XRP Ledger, allowing users to customize and manage the complete lifecycle of fiat-based CBDC transactions and distribution. And remember, like even in the private ledger space, um, XRP will be needed to bridge currencies. It's the, the best use case um, that we can really kind of talk about in terms of CBDCs, right? Bridging them, because it's something that is so crucial um, around that system. It's a pillar, if you will. And we do see after Ripple's recent victory against the SEC, the company's general counsel, Stu Alderati, said that leading banks and financial institutions could be looking forward to adopting Ripple's XRP ledger settlement platform. And yeah, I do think that that could very well be the case. I think that we're going to start to see a little bit more growth and adoption happening. Got to remember that's been, what, roughly a month now since the actual you know lawsuit announcement. So in my opinion, like as we really kind of look at this, you know, I think that we're on the uh, brink of a major push towards utility. And I think that's really kind of all starting to happen a little bit. But nonetheless, this is the proof of concept. It got published on July 10th of 2017. It's older. Um, remember, right? Like even the old documents and information are still crucial to mention today. Just like ISO 2022, you know, 2004 to 2025. Still significant, right? Um, but within this, one of the biggest things is that it concluded upon completion of the proof of concept uh, that this is simulating settlement or synchronization uh, between two RTGS systems. There's also a few other things. I want to mention liquidity because this does not get mentioned nearly enough. We do see down here, exploring situations in which the synchronized settlement process should not complete, for example, where there is a lack of availability around liquidity or available liquidity to make a payment and to understand potential ways of responding and building understanding of the technical challenges associated with both synchronization and the interledger protocol now here is where we have the roadmap for real-time growth settlement service beyond 2024 so this was the april 2022 uh post by the by them that they published so within this they're talking more so about the rtgs system they want to renew this rtgs system uh, with the move to enhance ISO 2022 messages in April of 2023 and new core settlement engine due to be introduced in spring of 2024. Now it's the summer of 2024. I have the full time frame uh, that I will go over here in a second. Now within this, they do mention liquidity. Uh, what they are trying to do here is it's very interesting. So it's operators of payment or security settlement systems. So features that could make your interaction with RTGS more effective. This includes extending the operating hours, new ways to connect, and a new centralized RTGS identity service. New services such as synchronization and APIs. We know APIs are being the big hit right now, especially with the Bank of England uh, collaborating with Quant and also the BIS through API connections, uh, especially within DLT and blockchain. And then also... There's more talks about synchronization, new ways to connect through APIs. They mentioned this multiple times. Um, but then also, in terms of liquidity, 
Here we have existing RTGS participants. We would be particularly interested in your feedback on, and here we have new ways to connect, maintaining and enhancing RTGS resiliency and extending the operating hours. But then new services such as synchronization, new ways to generate intraday liquidity or application programming interfaces. Very interesting here because now we are seeing uh, more talks about liquidity management, more ways to generate intraday liquidity. Now, they will be utilizing a few other things. There's no mention of Ripple. There's no mention of XRP at all. I'm not saying that Ripple and XRP are the ones being utilized here at all because they do mention a few things. So first off, new liquidity bridges with RTGS systems in other currencies. This is where Ripple can come into play with XRP for an example. And then they also do say generating liquidity in RTGS using securities in Crest as collateral. Interesting. And they do talk about for liquidity bridges, please specify which currencies you would like the bank to explore for further liquidity bridges. Is your organization interested in using uh, reciprocal liquidity bridges, i.e. also use your liquidity in RTGS to generate liquidity in other currencies? If so, in which currencies? And again, the big thing that to me that's very interesting around this is they want to reduce the funding cost of cross-border payments. They also want to reduce the frictions around cross-border payments. How do I know this? Well, because they've already talked about it. If you go over here to the um, RTGS renewal program, this is the next generation of our real-time growth settlement service. Uh, within this, they do break it fully down. Uh, they're talking about the, the need for real-time payments, uh, and they also want risk-free settlement. And also, they're talking about changes in technology, the evolving regulatory landscape. Um, and this is all also based upon a few things around their vision. Increased resiliency, greater access, wider interoperability, improved user functionality, strengthen end-to-end -end, uh, risk management. And this is the full uh, timeline. I'm going to go over here in a second. But first, I also want to go over here to the original, or this is the 2023 uh, response paper. Now, within this, they do mention quite a bit of things, which I will go over. But first, I want to talk a little bit about the value behind this RTGS service. So first off, it is fundamental to both the monetary and financial stability. The RTGS now settles over 750 billion pounds on an average everyday working day. And in autumn of 2022, they saw record peaks reaching over one trillion pounds. Now, this is interesting down here. So their consultation marked an important milestone in shaping the long-term vision and roadmap for RTGS and realizing the significant benefits that the new core settlement engine will provide. In addition to being very resilient, the new settlement engine has been designed to be modular and flexible, which will allow the bank to introduce enhancements more quickly and easily to meet the changing needs of the industry. They also did explore uh, ways of designing the future RTGS services in a way that provides the desired services, promotes competition, innovation, and value of money or for money. Um, but this is all focused on enhancing cross-border payments as well. Down here, we do see a few priorities. Operating hours, synchronization, resilient channels to connect to RTGS as well. These priority features, if delivered in the future, would help not only to enhance domestic payments, but would also support achieving the financial stability boards. All right, yeah, that's right. The FSB, the one that is working with the G20 on global crypto regulatory frameworks, the same organization that had Ripple comment on this global crypto regulatory framework back in December when they were in the middle of the lawsuit. Interesting. But this is their roadmap for enhancing cross border payments through making them cheaper, faster, and safer globally. Hmm. Very, very interesting. And when you go to this, by the way, like if you actually open this and read it, like this is the FSB, this was October of 2020. And they are literally mentioning this in a 2023 report. This is three years old. This is why I don't care if that document is six years old or 10 years old. And in this, oh, this is the best part. This report represents a roadmap to address the key challenges often faced by cross-border payments and the frictions in existing processes that contribute to these challenges. These challenges, namely high cost, low, low speed, limited access, and insufficient transparency affect end users and service providers through not all in the same way, uh, or sorry, though not all in the same way, um, who also mentions this? I mean, 
who is literally constantly talking about all of these challenges around cross-border payments and how they are solving them. Oh yeah, that's right, Ripple. And also, guess what? Within this, they're even talking about the unbanked individuals. Ripple also had focused on banking the unbanked. You can't make this up. This is literally from the FSB. And it's being mentioned here around a 2023 document from February of this year and how they want to enhance cross-border payments. You cannot make this up. And I'm pretty sure within this uh, document, they even talk about the frictions as well around cross-border payments. Here you guys have the benefits included, the potential to reduce costs for users in the long term through uh, new ways to connect to RTGS, such as further development of the RTGS application programming interface, API platform, and innovative services such as synchronization, which we know Ripple was a part of, which would or could help reduce the current frictions in cross-border payments. Who has been focused on this for the longest time? Do you understand why these documents are so damn important to mention? And a lot of these documents also mention liquidity and liquidity management and new ways to generate intraday liquidity through liquidity bridges beyond the Euro liquidity bridge. I mean, this is so wild to me because as we look at all of the recent tests, right? Like APIs are a crucial piece here. We know Quant is working with the BIS and the Bank of England. We know Ripple is working with the BIS. We know Ripple is also working with the um, Bank of England. Because guess what? They're, they're both, Ripple and Quant are both working with the Digital Pound Foundation, which is a think tank organization, but they are working with the Bank of England. We are seeing new RTGS systems being explored. We are seeing new technology being explored. We are seeing a big focus on enhancing cross-border payments. We know for a fact that Ripple has been hyper-focused on cross-border payments for well over a decade now. And then also the overall timeline. This is the RTGS renewal program. When is this going live? Well, first off, June 19th of this year, they migrated CHAPS payments to ISO 2022. Then, in February, they mentioned the uh, transition state three, the introduction of the new RTGS core ledger and settlement engine will take place in summer of 2024. And they also mentioned a few things around the end of November of 2024 as well. So the summer into November of 2024 is what you really kind of look at. So that's the timeline there. And again, all of this is still focused on synchronized settlement, extending operating hours, non-payment APIs, and also extending um reach to new liquidity um generation this is very very interesting and again like ripple is the only one that has a poc with the bank of england on synchronization and also like in terms of like in in terms of everything that we have seen around this space around new technology, we know for a fact that Ripple has the best in-class technology around synchronized settlement and also enhancing cross-border payments. This is a huge deal. This is a huge deal. We already know from the past that they've been working in the UK for a very long time. They know around like the payment scene that they are a leader around technology. And I'm sure that a lot of these central banks, like even the Bank of England, for an example, know how big of a game changer the Ripple technology is because they've already ran trials on this. So as we do look at the age of utility and as we do look at what's happening, it seems as though 2024 into 2025 is the big timeline to focus on. And listen, that's roughly not even, what, four months away now into 2024, and then 2025 is a whole year away. That's not too bad of a wait. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit longer, but there was a lot of information to go over. If you guys did enjoy the video, definitely hit that like button, subscribe to notifications on if you guys more free content. You guys are more than well, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. As those up that you all have a beautiful day or beautiful night. If you guys are on this video, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.